Today, let's take a look at the Connecticut Valley Arms 32 caliber squirrel rifle. This rifle started out as a kit well over a quarter of a century ago. A friend's father had purchased this kit rifle but never finished it, and it wound up being boxed up and put away. Long story short, after my friend's father passed away, my brother somehow wound up with it, but he had no real interest in it and eventually gave it to me. After many years of being in storage, there were of course some parts missing, and it took me a while to hunt down the missing parts. In the days before computers and online searches were available, you had to call the manufacturer and tell them what parts you were looking for. If they didn't have it, you would wind up calling every gunsmith in the phone book and hope that they'd have it or could make the part for you. Nevertheless, I finally managed to gather the needed parts and finish assembling the rifle. The rifle itself is a percussion side lock. Very true to form for rifles you would have expected to see on the early American frontier, long before the advent of metallic cartridges. On the frontier, small bore percussion rifles like this accounted for most of the small game for the stew pot. Grocery stores just weren't around back then. If you wanted to add meat to the pot, you had to go out and shoot it yourself. The 32 caliber squirrel rifle was essentially the 22 rimfire of its day. The 32 caliber is actually a bit more powerful than a modern 22, but it filled the same role as a small game rifle. This rifle requires the use of a .310 diameter lead ball along with a lubricated patch. A percussion cap is used to ignite the gunpowder exactly like they did two centuries ago. I found that a 25 grain of triple FG black powder produces the best accuracy. Since real black powder is getting pretty hard to find these days, I've tried using several different brands of black powder substitutes. The one I've settled on is Alliant Powder's Black MZ. This stuff is really clean burning and it produces less fouling than traditional black powder. I've also been using it to load rounds for some of my single six cartridge revolvers and it produces velocities virtually identical to black powder. This particular kit rifle has been out of production for many years, but Traditions Firearms currently offers a similar squirrel rifle, which is said to be a reproduction of the squirrel rifle that Davy Crockett himself once owned. They offer it in a finished version or in kit form. In most states, muzzleloading rifles and pistols do not fall into the category of firearms regulated by the federal mandate. You can even order one online without having to go through a federally licensed firearms dealer. They'll actually ship it right to your door. Therefore, no background check, transfer fee, or additional paperwork is required. There are, of course, a couple of states and municipalities where this doesn't apply. If you've found yourself trapped behind these enemy lines, I suggest formulating an escape plan. As a fan of historical firearms, I have a number of percussion rifles and pistols in my collection. If you'd like to hear more about these classic firearms, let me know in the comments section below. If there's enough interest, I'll upload a video or two about loading, cleaning, and properly maintaining black powder firearms. Well, that about wraps things up for today. Until next time, practice often, shoot straight, and keep your powder dry.